Roberta Dwyer. I'm a veterinarian at the Gluck Equine Research Center at the University of Kentucky. And today we're going to take, talk about taking some vital signs on your horse. This is critical for every horse owner to know how to do on every animal on their farm. And so we have a willing volunteer here. And what we're going to start out with is TPR, temperature, pulse, and respiration. The temperature part is a little bit different in horses than it is in people. Uh, we don't stick it under their tongue, but we use a digital thermometer and we do a rectal temperature. This is usually the downfall of many horse owners is that they've not gotten their horse accustomed to them working around their tail, let alone inserting a rectal thermometer uh, into their anus to get a temperature. I do not recommend mercury thermometers since they, carry, they contain mercury, which is toxic. They can break, they will break, and then you have an issue to deal with because it's a very hazardous substance. A good digital thermometer is the way to go. So you have a horse that's calm and is used to having people working around the tail. Usually if you just reach underneath the tail, sometimes they will actually lift their tail for you. And then what you do is you lubricate the tip of the thermometer with a little bit of Vaseline or some other non-toxic substance to ease the transition of the thermometer going in. And then you wait until the little beep goes off to tell you that the temperature has been taken. You always want to stand close to the hind end of an animal since if she decides to kick at a fly or kick at some unexpected noise, uh, you will not receive the full brunt of the kick. You always want to let the horse know where you're at. You always want the animal handler to be on the same side of the animal as you are because if she decides to act up, Terry can pull her head away and that will move the buttocks away from me and away from the hind legs. And our temperature is 101.5. Pulse or heart rate, um, the heart is right behind the elbow on an animal. And one of the easiest things to do is to just get a stethoscope. You can get them for under $15 and actually listen to the heart rate. So what you do is you get used to listening to the heart rate and then count how many beats in 15 seconds, multiply it by four. I never like to count less than 15 seconds such as counting for six seconds and multiplying by 10 to give the number of beats per minute because six seconds is just too short of a time. Her heart rate is right around 44, which is normal for an adult animal in the shade on a fairly cool day. That's one way to take the heart rate. You can also take pulses on horses. Thank you, you did just what I wanted you to do. Here's a big cheek muscle. You locate the big masseter muscle, and the jawbone, and you have to get a little used to feeling for something about the size of baling twine that rolls underneath your fingers. That's the facial artery. And again, you count the number of beats in that artery, number of pulses, times 15 seconds. This takes some getting used to for horses to allow this to, have, to happen, and the animals that are head shy, this might be an issue. So having the backup stethoscope is a, is a good, good tool. Obviously, the other piece of equipment you need is a watch that has a second hand or some other timekeeping device that'll tell you when 15 seconds is up. Uh, another important place that you should practice, and it does take a lot of practice on a normal horse, are the digital arteries that are down here on the lower leg. And what I usually do is I cut my hand around the fetlock and my thumb and my, my two index, my, my index finger rolls right on those arteries. So then I know the landmark. And these are not really strong bounding pulses in a normal animal. So it takes quite a bit of practice. Do it on all four legs to get some practice. Obviously they should both be equal, but sometimes one is easier to feel than the other. While you're down here, you might as well feel the hoof to make sure it's not hot. You don't know if it's abnormally hot unless you do this every day for a couple of weeks and you know exactly what's normal for your horse on any particular time of the day. So feel the hoof, feel the coronary band to make sure there's no excessive heat. 
Get the horse used to practicing that on all four legs. Respiration is our third of the TPR. One way you can do is to just look at the flank area and count how many breaths that the animal takes in 30 seconds or even a minute. Another method is to, with the horse just standing, nothing around its nose, watch the nostrils flare for every intake of breath. Horses do not breathe really quickly, so, you know, 12 to 15 breaths a minute, um, sometimes lower, sometimes higher, is going to be what you're, you're aiming for. Do not put your hand here. This horse is not interested in my hand, but if I had just, you know, worked with some sweet feed, this horse might sniff my hand. And sniffing is not a respiratory rate. Sniffing is sniffing. The importance of doing a temperature pulse respiration is it gives the veterinarian a baseline data of where your horse is at. Uh, if the temperature is sky high, that means something to a veterinarian. A heart rate, high respiratory rate, those are all going to you know, tell the veterinarian how urgent is this situation on this particular horse. Another measurement that we can do is on an adult horse in the middle of the neck, we can do a skin pinch test, which is an estimate of dehydration. So you do it the same way as if you would take a, a pinch of your skin on the back of your hand, let it go. It's going to disappear in a well hydrated person. Same way with a horse. You tent the, the skin, 1001, 1002. Within two seconds, it's back to normal. In extremely dehydrated horses that have their water um, supply has gone dry, they're on extended uh, transportation and they're not drinking well while they're being transported, uh, hardworking horses in very hot and humid circumstances, if that skin tents and it stays up there for three, four, five, even eight seconds, or it just never goes back down, that really will inform a veterinarian of the hydration status of that animal. Again, you're looking at the middle of the neck, adult horse, skin pinch, 1001, 1002. If it stays up, just keep counting until it goes down. That's a critical piece of information that's very easy to do. And the last one we'll talk about is the color of the horse's mucous membranes. And one easy way to do this is to just, horses are usually used to having their mouths worked with, or putting in bits, is to look at this pink of the upper gums. A, it should be pink, about the color of your fingernail. And you can lift it up, press down hard with your thumb, it should blanch it. Lift up again, 1001, 1002 the pink should return to that blanched out area. You can also do it with your thumbnail. Press down on your thumbnail, it blanches to white, lift up, within one second it's back to the normal pink color. This is a measurement of um, this, the capillary refill time, which is an estimate of, of blood pressure. If the horse's gums are pure white, that's a very high risk indicator of something bad going on with your horse but you need to know what normal color pink is for your individual animal. So get them used to having you work with their upper lip. You can also do it on the lower gum if that's easier for your horse. And just press and release, 1001, 1002. Within a second, that pink is normal. If the color is brick red, white, or yellow, those are all abnormal findings, and you want to report that to your veterinarian as well. So in this section, we've gone through vital signs, the typical temperature, pulse, respiration, how to take those on your horses, also a dehydration status, and a capillary refill time that is an estimate of, of blood pressure. So with those pieces of information, if you have a horse that is starting to become ill, that's the kind of information that a veterinarian is going to want besides the general behavior and symptoms of the horse that you've observed. For more information on basic vital sign checking, you can go to thehorse.com, extension veterinary websites, and uh, there's a lot of information available from your local veterinary school. Mm -hmm.